The 2020 census provides a snapshot of our nation, our population, where we live, and so much more. The results are critically important because this once-a-decade census data determines how federal funding is allocated to cities and communities that rely on it for social programs, infrastructure, and more. Completing the census in an age of misinformation poses challenges. With me today is Devere Cohen, senior writer and editor focusing on immigration and demographics at Pew Research Center, and Robert Santos, vice president and chief methodologist at the Urban Institute, where he's an expert in social science and policy research. So first, what's the, what's the, what are the Pew Trusts doing to try to uh, help educate people in this time? We have a lot of interesting work going at Pew Research Center. We've been taking surveys of the population, asking people what they know about the census and what they think about it. We just released one last week in which people said favorable things about the census. They'd heard of it, but there's also a lot of mistaken beliefs out there. For example, most people think there's a citizenship question on the census, which mm. there is not. We're also writing blog posts, and uh, my favorite thing is we've published something called a mini course. You sign up for five short emails written in plain English telling you all about the census, how it's done, its history, the challenges it faces, and what the data might show. So it's interesting when she says that a lot of people still think that there's a citizenship question, what are the implications of that? Uh, the implications are that the, because of the year-long uh, citizenship fracas, there's been fear instilled into the immigrant community and the, and the Latinx community. And that fear does not go away simply with the declaration by the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. uh, we expect that that's going to have uh, a, a risk of uh, non-performance or non-participation uh, by, uh, by the Latino population. And what kind of underrepresentation or what kind of hesitation do we see already in that community? Uh, already th there are um, expressions in the community of individuals questioning the use of the census data, how it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. um, there are uh, efforts being made to try to uh, get the message out that the data will not be used in that, in that capacity. Uh, however, it's an, up it's an uphill struggle. I mean, this is traditionally something that is supposed to be kind of just raw numbers. We're not talking about politics here. We're talking about a relatively simple idea. You know, who are you, where are you from, et cetera, et cetera. But when politics kind of creeps into it, or even history, let's say if you were one of the DACA recipients and you decided to register and all of a sudden here you are finding that perhaps that wasn't in your best interest long term, how does that complicate all these things? Well, really, the census faces a long term challenge in counting what they call hard to count populations. So it's not just uh, the, the immigrants that, that we're focusing on today, but also communities of color. Our own survey work showed that black adults and Latino adults were less likely to say they were gonna participate in the census than other groups. Young adults, many of whom who haven't taken a census before, don't, are less willing to say they're gonna participate. So this has been a challenge the Bureau has faced for decades. And uh, we're, they're, they're hoping that they're, they're going to be able to do a better job this time, and we'll see. And, you know, if somebody says, listen, these are rounding errors, what's a quarter of a percent undercount mean? What's one percent? What are the real ripple effects of that? Well, it, it, it's, it's funny that folks say that. Uh, the last, the 2010 census was, uh, was touted to be the most accurate ever within a few hundredths of a percent of the total population. However, that masked uh, the fact that there was an overcount of certain populations, like white and elderly, while there was an undercount of uh, Latinx population, uh, Asian Americans, African Americans, people who rent, the hard to count uh, populations that we just discussed. And because of that, the implications are that within states and within communities, the the minority areas or neighborhoods, communities that are underrepresented tend to get less than they deserve based on a, a true count. In federal while other communities, and resources, you mean. While other communities, uh, communities get more than they deserve. And when, when, we, when we look at this kind of in the long term, and, and, and Pew Research, you've been doing these things for a long time, thinking, have people's attitudes toward the census changed? The census every 10 years has a knowledge struggle because what do you remember from 10 years ago? Do you remember mm. that you filled out your form or not even? So they have to get people educated. And we find that the same uh, kinds of mistaken beliefs persist. For example, 10 years ago, we did a survey. We asked, uh, is a census required by law? 
Um, many people thought it wasn't. Most people, in fact, and the same thing is still true today. So each time it's, it's like the wave comes in again and washes away uh, the footprints in the sand and they have to start again. Uh, it's it's a persistent problem. You know, we're at a journalism conference and we were just talking off camera. You're having trainings for journalists because newsrooms look different every 10 years and not everybody remembers covering the last census if they have done it. That's right. This is my fourth census, I will say. <laughs> First two as a journalist and second two, two with Pew Research. But, uh, you know, it's a unicorn. You find a unicorn when you find a journalist who's covered more than one, mm -hmm. um, not to mention uh, multiple ones. And, of course, what, what's going on in journalism these days with all the turnover and new, new mm -hmm. journalism organizations coming on, uh, there are a lot of folks who've never, never done it before. So there's a lot of training going on out there by multiple groups, including uh, the Pointer Institute, which, which, uh, whose workshops I've been uh, doing, but also um, the, the IRE Journalism Organization, Reveal, is doing something. There's a group called News Counts that's matching up academics and press people funded by Knight Foundation. So there's a lot going on out there and we'll see whether it meets, meets the need. You know, we, we flicked at it, but the climate of misinformation or disinformation, how much of an impact does that have? And what kinds of, if you've got any anecdotal evidence or examples of how are people, um, well, purposefully steered or misguided when they see information about the census that could be really impactful in their lives? Well, it, it, it's a big problem uh, because most folks nowadays get their news and information from social media. Mm. And because of that, uh, the, the opportunity and the risk of uh, infusing misinformation into those venues uh, heightens the risk that people are gonna come away with uh, misperceptions about what's really going on in the world. Now, uh, Pew just did a survey on misinformation, correct? Yeah. So you should, you should discuss yeah, some yeah. of the results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's not so much my area, but yeah. I do know that for, for journalists, there's a, a, a balancing act. Um, you don't want to feed the flames by, by saying, there's this information out there, specifically this, and, but it's wrong um, because it might, f it, it, there, there's some concern that that might fuel uh, people's r memories in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So uh, as, as I understand it, and it's, again, not my You don't want to amplify area. a bad signal in That's the first right. place, right? That's right. 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 And it's also, I mean, it seems that all you need is a kind of a shred of th truth somewhere in there, and you could wrap it around something and say, hey, if you get this in the mail, you're automatically going to be targeted or et cetera, you know, it's burn so this. It's easy to camouflage uh, misinformation in the guise of uh, truth. Yeah. Uh, for example, there, there were letters that were sent out uh, by a certain political party that appeared to look like official Census Bureau uh, documents. Even on blue yeah. paper. Right. <laughs> and so there are many ways that misinformation manifests um, and, th and the, the results can be pretty bad. <laughs> so are you optimistic? You know, every census is a high risk endeavor. Inherently so, yeah. because it's the only thing we ask everybody to do in the United States. And so, and it's complicated as our society has gotten more complicated and as people have gotten more fatigued and unwilling to answer surveys. So it's a high wire act just, just to describe it, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> previous censuses have had big, uh, you know, problems leading up to them. I could go into them if you want, but just suffice to say that every census has something that comes up that that everybody thinks is going to sink it. Um, who knows what so this So cautiously optimistic. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just say that um, in the research that we did at, at the Urban Institute, we took the magnificent performance purportedly of the 2010 census, superimposed that performance level on a 2020 population, population yeah. and we saw an undercount. And so we are, we are a bit cautious about that. The problem, not the problem is, the, the beauty is that the United States is becoming a more diverse population. Yeah. But the more diverse population tends to include the people that are hard to count. Mm -hmm. And so there is a real challenge on the Census Bureau's hands. We are doing all we can to make sure that everybody gets counted, that we convince, that we, we try to engage grassroots efforts peer to peer to get people to understand that it's okay to participate and that they deserve 
to, to, to be counted. All right. uh, and so that's what, that's we're right now we're just focused on trying to get the count out. <laughs> okay, Bob Santos from the Urban Institute, Devera Cohen from uh, Pew Research, thanks so much for joining uh, us. Thank you so thank much. You.